Welcome to the Sort It Out SI League Guide for Japan, where we'll look at the league structure within Football Manager 2024 and run through a few save ideas if you want to start your career in Japan. Now, the Japanese leagues are brand new to FM24, having not been seen in the series since the Championship Manager days. Now, on FM24, Japan has three playable levels with three divisions and a total of 60 playable teams. Now, the season in Japan runs on a calendar year, so starts in roughly February, running all the way through to December. Uh, we'll cover all all levels of the playable pyramid including continental qualification and the domestic cup competitions now we start our guide with the top tier the meiji yasuda j1 league which in the first season at least is an 18 team league playing the usual double round robin schedule for 34 games from the 2024 season the league expands out to 20 teams to cover a 38 game season uh, which also has a change to the relegation situation as well for 2023 there's just a single relegation place on offer with the bottom team getting relegated into the second tier but for 2024 onwards there will be three automatic relegation places now at the top of the table there are three or four qualification places on offer for asian continental qualification competitions rather um, but the top two teams automatically qualify for the champions league which will become the champions league elite for the 24-25 season um, with the third place team heading into the new afc champions league two but in the first 23 season, they'll all go into the Champions League because it's just one big competition. Uh, the final qualification place goes to the winner of the Emperor's Cup. Now, in terms of the squad registration rules for the J-League, there are no longer any limits, for example, on foreign players in the squad in general, but there is a limit to just five foreign players for a given match day squad. So keep an eye on that if you wish to manage in Japan, which is why you're here. Clearly, there is a list of nations uh, for which these are exempt from this rule. So check out the partner nations list on the competition rules page to find out if the players from which nations don't count to that five player limit. Now, the second playable tier is the Meiji Yasuda J2 League, uh, which begins as a 22 uh, team league playing a 42 game season but for 2024 as part of the league restructure this is reduced down to 20 to create uniformity across the three leagues of the J League structure. Spoiler J3 is 20 teams. Uh, for both 2023 and 2024 onwards there are three promotion places uh, the top two teams are automatically uh, promoted up to J1 with third through sixth heading into a playoff. As you'd expect third place sixth fourth place fifth with the highest ranking team advancing should scores be level. Uh, the winner of the finals gains promotion to the J1 League, as we've said. Uh, and for 2023, there are two automatic relegation places, but this extends down to three places for 2024 as part of that restructure. The relegated teams go down into the J3 League, which, as we said, is a 20-team league and remains so after the restructure in the 2024 season. But the promotion places do change after that first season. So in that first season, there are just two automatic automatic promotion places with a change in the 2024 season being that third through four uh, through third through sixth enter into a promotion playoff as with the tier above uh, for that final promotion place at the other end of the table there is one automatic relegation place with 19th place club heading into a relegation playoff with a club from the unplayable fourth tier now we're going to shift focus to the domestic cup competitions of which there are two in japan uh, the national cup competition which is the emperor's cup and the j league cup now we'll start with the emperor's cup which in-game starts with the first round. But in the real world, there is a series of prefectural uh, qualifying rounds for the 47 prefectures of Japan, where teams from J3 League and below have to qualify on a regional basis. This means that in-game, most, but not necessarily all, J3 teams enter in the first round, which sees all of the 47 qualifiers paired with a seeded amateur team uh, in a single uh, game single tie with extra time and penalties if scores are level uh, the 24 winners are joined by the teams from the j1 and j2 in the second round uh, with the same format of the ties remaining the tournament continues as a single elimination knockout tournament all the way through to the final uh, and the winner will gain qualification into the afc champions league unless they've already done so via the J1 League, in which it goes to fourth place in the league instead. Uh, now we have the J League Cup, which in 2023 sees only the 18 J1 League teams, plus the two teams that were relegated in the 22 season, um, 
all entering into a group stage with five groups of four teams playing a double round robin schedule in the groups for six games. Uh, the five group winners plus the best three second place teams advance into the quarterfinals. Uh, from there, the quarterfinals and semifinals are two legs ties, home and away, with extra time and penalties available if scores are level after the second leg. Uh, the final is a single match held at a neutral ground. Now, for 2024, this competition changes completely and opens up to all levels of the J League, so all three playable divisions. Uh, with every team from J1, J2 and J3 entering into the first round, apart from the four teams that are playing in Asian continental competitions from the previous season. So if they've qualified in the previous season, they will not be in the first group, uh, the first round, sorry, of the J League Cup. Uh, those four teams join the 28 winners from the first round in the second round, and the competition continues as a single elimination knockout tournament, no further teams entering all the way through to the final. Every round, apart from that final, is once again a two-legged home and away tie, extra time penalties after the second leg if needed, Final is held on neutral ground as a single match. Now, with all that covered, let's have a look at some fantastic save ideas for Japan across the multiple levels of playable football. Now, as is tradition, we start with the reigning champions, Yokohama F. Marinos, who took their seventh Japanese title and fifth during the J-League professional era in 2022. Uh, the club were originally formed in 1972 as company team Nissan Motor FC, and under this guise won back-to-back -back titles in 1988 and 89, and won the Asian Cup Winners' Cup titles in 92 and 93. At the formation of the J-League, they were one of the founding clubs, becoming a professional side under the Yokohama Marinos name. Uh, an F was then added to the name after they merged with their bankrupt city rivals, uh, Yokohama Flugels, in 1999. Uh, this resulted in a protest club being formed, uh, a Phoenix club in the form of Yokohama FC, which are now rivals with Yokohama F Marinos. Uh, they continued their winning ways, however, securing five further J-League league titles over the years and they've got a partial ownership from the city football group but surprisingly limited success in continental football having never really seen any success in the champions league whatsoever barely ever getting out of the group stages now that must be your target as their new manager consolidate domestic success and aim to become the champions of asia now marinos aren't oh, the most successful club in J-League history though, as Kashima Antlers have eight J-League titles and are the only other team to have completed in every J-1 season since the league's formation in 1993. Now the club were founded originally in 1947 as the company team Sumitomo Metal Industries Factory FC uh, and didn't really see much success throughout their history until the fully professional uh, J-League formed uh, in 1993 itself. Uh, the club took the name Kashima Antlers and were effectively promoted from the second tier and never looked back. So they were the one of the teams that wanted to go professional and they've never looked back since, winning a total of 17 domestic trophies, including those eight J League titles that we've already mentioned during the professional era and being crowned Champions League winners in 2018. Now, Antlers are the only J League side to win three titles in a row from 20, uh, 2007 to 2009, uh, but they haven't won the league title since 2016. So. You know, you're looking where this is going now. That's your aim, to win the J-League once again. Uh, the club have strong links with Brazil after being associated with Zico at the end of his career, with the club seeing many Brazilian players and managers over the years. Now, you don't have to be Brazilian to manage them, uh, but you will be expected to continue to bring home the trophies, both domestically and continentally. Now, one hugely successful club to another... We've got Tokyo Verdi, whose period of Japanese dominance is now nearly 30 years ago and under a different name, essentially. Uh, the club were founded in 1969 as Yomiuru FC and rose to the top of the JSL, which was the top league at the time, uh, and were the team to beat throughout the 1980s and early 90s, winning the last two JSL titles before the J League was formed. Now, the club were rebranded in 1993 as Verdi Kawasaki and won the first ever two, the first two ever J League titles. So taking four on the bounce, which is unprecedented in Japan, as we've mentioned, uh, Kashima only did it three times in the J League. So, but that period, that, that period there of dominance in the early 90s, late 80s, quickly faded. By the mid 90s, they were basically just a mid-table side. They've not won the J League since. And in 2001, the club returned from Kawasaki to Tokyo and took in their current name. But fortunes didn't really change. Uh, the side struggled to keep a firm standing in the J1, 
um, for most of the time there, um, but then were relegated for the most recent time back in 2008, so it's a long time ago now. Uh, Verdi are one of Japan, uh, Japan's most decorated clubs and former Asian champions, but they've been firmly locked in as a mid-table J2 side for the last 15 years. Uh, now your task is to change these fortunes around and return the side to their past glories and get a J-League title for the first time in over 30 years. Uh, we remain in J2 now for JEF United Chiba, uh, who are former Asian champions and founder members of both the Japan Soccer League and the J-League, so they've been around a while. The team were formed in 1946 as the company team Furukawa Electric, uh, and were a constant fixture in the top flight from the JSL founding uh, in 1965 all the way through to their relegation from the J1 in 2009. Uh, throughout that time, they've only won the Japanese title twice, uh, but they became the first Japanese team to win the Asia Club Championship, which was the precursor to the AFC Champions League, in 1986. Uh, Furukawa Electric merged with another company team uh, in JR East to become JEF United, so... That's where the, the letters come from, at least. Uh, Ichihara at the foundation of the J League in 1993. Uh, they then added Chiba to the name in 2005. And after many years battling in the J League, they were relegated into J2 for the 2010 season. They've come close to promotion several times since then, but they are still on the outside looking in. Uh, the goal is clear if you take over as their new manager, uh, return to the J1 and take their first Japanese title since 1985. So our final club then, as you counted, this is number five. Uh, we go down into J3 at the start of the game and this final club is Okinawan side FC Ryukyu. Uh, this side are the first from the island of Okinawa to make it to the professional levels of Japanese football, uh, where they earned their promotion into the new J3 League back in 2014, uh, only 11 years after the club were formed in 2003. Uh, Ryukyu were a consistent uh, mid-table side in J3 until they won it and were promoted in 2018. Uh, this gave them a four-year stint in J2, which ended in relegation in the 2022 season, so the last one before the game begins. Uh, they were the first, time to, the first team from Okinawa to ever play in a national league. The first to play in both J3 and J2. So that's your task. Keep that runner first going by getting the club promoted up to the J1 league and then aim to take the Japanese title and beyond. Uh, so there we have it. That is a whistle-stop tour of the playable Japanese levels on Football Manager 2024, along with five great save ideas. Now, if you're familiar with either real-life Japanese football or somehow you've managed to play them on Football Manager in the past through some downloads, let us know in the comments and share your thoughts and particularly corrections on my terrible pronunciation uh, and some stories of Japanese football if you've managed there even back in Championship Manager or through some mods in the past or even on the early access of FM24. Let us know how things have been going down below. Uh, while you're there, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out more league guides and our essential how to install guides as well. More great content coming here on the channel and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.